Hello! Welcome back to Online Sunday School. Hello! We have another lesson for you on the tabernacle. Right! Yes! Ooh. And so we need to remember that this tabernacle was not supposed to be like our church is today. Not? Nope, not. The, all the Israelites never came at exactly the same time. No. Like we all go to church together. They came on their own with their sacrifice. And we'll uncover this and have a look. They came with their sacrifice into this courtyard area. Right. Mm hmm And they didn't actually go in the tabernacle. Only the priests went into this tabernacle part. Oh. Mm hmm So the Israelites would bring their sacrifice, and the priest would wash in the laver and present the sacrifice on the bronze altar. We've learned about those two already. Right. And today we're going to look in here, and this oh. is the tabernacle. We're going to uncover it and look inside. Oh, I'm ready. Yes. We're going to just think first, though, that this cloud would have been over here. So all the Israelites were camped around the outside, and the cloud was over top of this tabernacle. So it was really quite special. And the Israelites could see that when they came in. All right. But only the priests were able to work in here. So let's look inside and see what the inside is like. Oh, there are two rooms. There are. There's two rooms. So the first one was called the Holy Place, and the second one was called the Most Holy Place. We'll talk about that another day. So the Holy Place had three pieces of furniture inside, and we're going to look at one of them today. Wow. So let's grab our box and have a look inside and see what we've got. Yeah. Oh, what is that? Let's pull it out and see. That looks like a, like a, like a, like a candlestick. It does look like a candlestick. Lots of candlesticks. Right. It was called a menorah. A menorah. Mm -hmm. And there were seven branches, like oh, you can I see can here. See that. And there would have been one lamp on each of those seven branches. So it was called the lampstand or the menorah. So we're gonna read in Exodus 25, verse 31 all about the menorah. So right. let's have a look inside our Bible. So grab your Bibles and open to Exodus 25 verses 31 to 40. Make a lampstand of pure hammered gold. The entire lampstand and its decorations will be one piece. The base, the center stem, lamp cups, buds and blossoms. It will have six branches, three branches going out from each side of the center stem. Each of the six branches will hold a cup shaped like an almond blossom, complete with buds and petals. The center stem of the lampstand will be decorated with four almond blossoms, complete with buds and petals. One blossom will be set beneath each pair of branches where they extend from the center stem. The decorations and the branches must all be one piece with the stem, and they must be hammered from pure gold. Then make, this, make the seven lamps for the lampstand, and set them so they reflect their light forward. The lamp snuffers and trays must also be made of pure gold. You will need 75 pounds of pure gold for the lampstand and its accessories. Be sure that you make everything according to the pattern I have shown you here on the mountain. Seventy-five pounds of gold? Seventy-five pounds of gold. That's a lot. It does sound like a lot, doesn't it? So it wouldn't have been very small. No, it not like that. Very tall. Wow. And in this space that would have been very dark, the lampstand would give light, right? Right. And the priest, if we stand him up there, you can see that he would have been almost the same size right. as the menorah. Wow. And because the walls of the holy place, all those wooden boards were covered with gold, what do you think that dark room would have looked like? Oh. Very bright. Very bright. Almost like you can't see. Almost like you couldn't see. Right. With all that light reflecting oh. off all that gold. Wow. It would have been amazing. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Really. Mm -hmm. Whoa. So that's the menorah. And that's the 75 pounds of gold. But what about what it was supposed to look like? 
Yeah, I didn't get that. What is an almond? An almond is a nut. Oh. Yeah. Huh. And they grow on trees. So mm -hmm. let's have a look. We have some pictures on my computer. Oh, yeah. We'll head on over to the computer and see these pictures. So that in there is the, the almond nut, right? You may have seen those and maybe even tasted them. At Christmas. At Christmas time, exactly. Yeah. And this is the flower that they grow from. Oh, that looks pretty. Mm -hmm. So this is a bud and this is a blossom. And these are the branches. And here we have the trees. Wow, looks they're, like snow. They're beautiful, aren't they? Yes. And that's what God wanted that menorah to be to look like. Wow. Mm -hmm. Really beautiful. Now let's find out a little bit about what the priests had to do with that menorah all oh, the time. That's so, a good question. Yeah. Let's look at Exodus 27 verses 20 and 21 and see what the priests did with it. So Exodus 27 verses 20 to 21. Tell the people of Israel to bring you pure olive oil for the lampstand so it can be kept burning continually. The lampstand will be placed outside the inner curtain of the most holy place in the tabernacle. Aaron and his sons will keep the lamps burning in the Lord's presence day and night. This is a permanent law for the people of Israel and it must be kept by all future generations. Wow! Mm -hmm. So they had special oil kept brought from the people made of olives, so special oil. And they would put the oil in those lamps. And how often was that light supposed to be on? One time. Do you remember what it said in the passage? Day in, day out. Day in and day out. Oh. Day and night. All day and all night. The lamp had to be continually burning. Oh. So that would have been a lot of oil. And it would have kept them pretty busy, making sure that the oil didn't run out and that the flame stayed on. Pretty neat, hey? Mm -hmm. So, and it was really important that it was be burning all the time. So, can either of you guess, or maybe you at home guess, what that menorah represents for us? What was, the, what was God trying to teach the Israelites or teach us through this menorah? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. So let's think about that. The Israelites couldn't see it. So this is something that we can't see, but we know it's there. And it's always on, and it's always pure. Uh -huh. hmm. Maybe we can have a look in our Bibles and read John 12, verse 46 for a clue. Right. Yes. So let's look into the book of John in the New Testament. John 12, verse 46. And it says, I have come as a light to shine in this dark world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the darkness. So who's that speaking there? Oh, is that Jesus? That's Jesus. And he says, I am the light. Oh. Shining in the darkness. So there we have a light in kind of a dark space. Right. right. And anyone who sees him won't be in darkness anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty special. It is. That this is teaching us about something that we know now that they didn't know back then. And so it says that whenever we believe in him, we don't stay in the darkness. So let's look at Ephesians 5. We're going to flip a little further in the New Testament to Ephesians 5, verses 8 and 10. See what it says there. Ephesians 5, verses 8 and 10. 8 to 10. For though your hearts were once full of darkness, now you are full of light from the Lord, and your behavior should show it. For this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. So that is what the light does in our lives, right? We're dark inside, but we allow the light to come in when we invite Jesus to live in our hearts. All right. Mm -hmm. And then he can shine 
in our hearts and make us different from the inside out. Cool, hey? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we can do that by reading our Bibles, right? Learning about Him and praying, talking to Him. So we want to think a little bit more about what this means for us. It's a little bit like stars in the sky. Yeah. The sky at night is pretty dark, isn't it? It is. Mm -hmm. But there is some, some sparkly little stars. Sparkly little stars, that's right. And we are supposed to be just like those sparkly little stars. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it tells us a little bit more about that in the book of Philippians. So flip in your Bibles again to Philippians 2 verses 13 to 15. Let's see what it says in there. Philippians 2 verses 13 to 15. And that's where it says, For God is working in you, giving you the desire to obey him and the power to do what pleases him. In everything you do, stay away from complaining and arguing so that no one can speak a word of blame against you. You are to live clean, innocent lives as children of God in a dark world full of crooked and perverse people. Let your lives shine brightly before them. Mm. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're like stars, bright stars in a dark world. Not because we're perfect, but because Jesus is perfect. Mm. And he gives us his Holy Spirit, like the oil in those lamps, to change us from the inside out. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, even when we make mistakes sometimes, what can we do? Mm, we can ask for forgiveness. We can ask for forgiveness. Just from God or from someone else? Mm, maybe from both. From both. From the people, right? The people we've hurt, right? And from God himself. And he will always, always forgive us. And we can forgive one another too because we know that Jesus lives inside and gives us light. Right. Mm -hmm. So thanks for listening. Ooh. And I hope that you keep learning more and more about who Jesus is and how he changes us inside out. Right. So have a good week, kids. So bye-bye, little See stars. See you again bye. soon. Bye.